Good morning. Welcome to our second healing service video. Um, good to see you all. I hope everybody is well. I want to talk to you about just a few things that maybe uh, as we move forward here and uh, as times are still holding us all apart from each other, I want to talk to you a little bit first about our Book of Common Prayer. Our Book of Common Prayer is an invaluable resource to us all. If you have one at home, I advise you to get it out. Be looking at some of our morning, noon, evening, and uh, end of day services for individuals in their homes. I think you'll find them short and, uh, and yet very edifying. I think there's a lot in them for us in our homes and with our families. Another resource, of course, is our revised common lectionary, which you can find online. It's interesting. It's a part of our church community beyond the Episcopal Church. All Episcopal churches read the same readings each Sunday and uh, each day of the week for the Revised Common Lectionary. But we're also reading the same readings in the Catholic Church, uh, the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Lutheran Church, and other churches. So it keeps us all together as a community reading the same readings, listening to the same stories of God, and, and that's a strong sense of community. While talking of that, I want to mention one other thing about, about the Book of Common Prayer and our common readings. I know we've all heard the phrase that we should be giving up prayers to God unceasingly at all times. The way the common lectionary is assigned and the way we have morning, noon, evening, and end of day services, you can think about it. When Christians around the world, given all the time zones, pray in the morning, at noon, in the evening, and at the end of day, there are, from humanity, going up to God, prayers constantly coming to God. By doing morning prayer or any part of the noon, evening, after late evening prayers, you're a part of that. You are a part of the world's unceasing prayers to God. And we certainly need that at this time. A few other things I want to mention to you right now. The bishop has extended the time for us getting together at church. He has taken it now until the 1st of May. So that certainly takes us through Holy Week. We are trying to find uh, interesting ways for us to worship in the special week we have coming up of Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and our Easter celebration. We're trying to think of ways we can do that together while apart. One of the ways we've come up with is uh, we've ordered little communion sets for each of us, uh, a small little cup of wine that's sealed with a wafer in the top be consecrating all of those here on the altar at St. James and then distributing those to folks before Easter in the hopes that on Easter morning at the given time we can all open up our little cup and pull out our wafer and take communion together. We ordered those, uh, they're supposed to be shipped to us on April 3rd. Hopefully they get here long before April 12th and that's a part of a celebration that we're planning for. Easter Sunday. Other things I'll be letting you know about as they come up. Um, I also want to say how proud I am of folks around our church for coming up with ways to continue on in their daily spiritual lives. We have groups that are meeting, our EFM group has been meeting online in a Zoom video together. We have reunion groups that are meeting together online and by phone. We have folks just checking up on each other, friends staying in touch, making sure we're all in good shape and healthy. Very soon now, you should be getting a call from, uh, we have pastoral care groups by geographical location and um, nine different groups, you're in one of them, and you will be getting a call from somebody um, letting you know who the people in your group are that we might be able to keep in touch with each other on a smaller scale, that we can 
keep track of how people are and what their needs are, and then bring those to the church as needed, or even within the group. Just find ways to take care of each other. Lastly, before we start our healing service today, I just want to thank Christy Steele, who, without her work, our videos would not be happening, and I very much appreciate what she's doing to keep us all together and in communion together as we go through these very difficult times. It's a beautiful day outside. Spring is popping up. The temperature is up. The trees are all getting green. Uh, it's hard to remember that we are going through a difficult time right now when you step outside. But I'll encourage you to do so. Step outside and see the glory of God and the promise of a new day. God bless. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We'll have the readings. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 3 through 5. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3-5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of our consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also are our consolation it's abundant through Christ, the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading comes from the book of Mark, Mark chapter 6, verses 7 and 12 through 13. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Lifting for healing. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies a temple of your presence. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Grant to all who seek your guidance, and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a 
knowledge of your will, and an awareness of your presence. Men broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us unto everlasting life. Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven and earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make us know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us bless the Lord.